This is a drone. This is a 3D printer. And this is a 3D printed drone. So today I'm going to be taking you through the process of how I went about designing this and some of the challenges that I ran into along the way. Now these days we all know that drones are typically made of carbon fiber on the frame and that's for a few reasons. Number one is the durability. Carbon fiber is much more durable. It's much tougher than 3D printing material. I have found in the past that if you try and fly anything 3D printed, if you hit the slightest twig or blade of grass almost, the thing just explodes into a million pieces. The carbon fiber is much more resilient. So that's the first reason. The second reason has more to do with the tuning process of the flight controller. So when you have a drone that's not super stiff and like locked in mechanically, the flight controller has a very hard time stabilizing the flight and making it smooth for the user. And that's a big reason why carbon fiber is used instead of any other material. It's lightweight, it's super stiff, and it's durable. It's perfect for this application. A 3D printing material, on the other hand, is not good for this application at all. It's brittle, it's not as stiff, and it's actually pretty heavy compared to something like carbon fiber. So those are the main things working against me here right from the start. I have been able to overcome them in the past, but the drone didn't fly very well. So we're going to try and make Make a little bit better one today that flies halfway decent. We'll see how that goes. Now let's hop over to the computer and I'll show you my design. Now I kind of took inspiration partly from my XL5, the iFlight frame, and partly from the Lumineer frame, the QAV R2. And what I mean by that is I have a true X configuration here on the arms. So the distance between all four motors from each other is exactly the same, just like on the iFlight XL5. Now the QAV, what I like about that one is this deck area is quite wide in comparison to other frames. So I, I took kind of that aspect and I made it even a little bit wider. So I have plenty of room in here to work with and to mount electronics. And the height of it above the main plate of the frame is like 1.1 inches or whatever the standard standoff length is. Maybe I don't remember what it is in millimeters. So it's pretty standard in terms of sizing. I just tried to maximize the building space in here. It's one of my pet peeves when they give you almost no space to work with. So I tried to make that a little bit better here. It has standard 30 millimeter hole patterns for the flight controller and speed control stack and typical 20 by 20 for the VTX. And this is actually a little receiver holder thing I made. So everything mounts in just how you'd expect on pretty much any frame out there. And I got like a, I think it's a nano size camera in here, just a little representative model I made. And that just mounts in these little plates, just like a typical frame, not really too much different. As far as the arms, I have these little cutouts in here and that's to save weight because like I mentioned before, this 3D printing material, it is pretty heavy and it's really not very strong. So you, you have to kind of beef this up as much as you possibly can without sacrificing too much on weight. So these are 0.3 inches thick and that's a little under eight millimeters for those metric people out there. So I've had designs like this in the past and they have worked fairly well, but that was with PLA material. I will be using PETG this time. I don't have any PLA anymore. And PETG, it's a little bit tougher, but it's not as stiff as PLA is. So that could cause some tuning issues. Maybe I'll even get a flyaway. I'm not sure yet, we'll find out. But I think this is good enough to just go ahead, print one out and see how it works.
Well, that first one didn't go so well. You saw there are some pretty crazy vibrations in there and it would have had to fly away if I didn't disarm it. Luckily I did though, I didn't want it flying off into some neighborhood and hitting somebody, that would have been very bad. So what I did for the second revision was just add some stiffener bars on each side here. That way there's less flex for each of these arms and hopefully that'll dampen out some of that vibration and make it wobble quite a bit less. And then hopefully from there, I can maybe add some filters in, in the beta flight settings and maybe turn down the P gain a little bit, just so the flight controller is not trying to do anything too crazy to get this to level. We wanna hopefully ignore some of this vibration noise and just focus on what we actually need instead. So hopefully that works. I'm gonna go do that in beta flight. All right, so back out here, you know, I didn't have this problem when I used to print these. So I wonder if, I don't know, maybe the geometry is just weird enough to make these vibrations or I was also using PLA before and that's a little bit stiffer. So that could be why, but we'll see if this works. I think it has a better chance now at least. All right, so first we're going with just DVR. I don't want to throw the GoPro on if it's just gonna freak out and crash again. All right, let's go. Try to take it easy. Well, looks good so far. Yeah, that actually that actually looks good. It sure feels a lot stiffer than before. That being said, it still flies like shit. The pit tune's horrible. It's a super, super loose and floppy pit tune just to maximize my chances of getting this to work. But I'm happy it flies at least. Let's throw a GoPro on. All right, GoPro is on. Got to take it pretty easy because in any crash at all, these things just blow up. So I won't be going too crazy. Let's just hope it doesn't freak out now. Okay. Good so far. Man, it's so floppy though, you can see it. P gain is really low, the D gain is non-existent almost. But all that to say, you can still, you can still fly a 3D printed drone just fine. It really is about the pilot a lot of the times. It's not always about the gear. And my goal here is to show that. <laughs> this is a terrible tune. The frame is loose as hell. And I'm still able to freestyle. So all you guys that are spending ridiculous amounts of money on all this gear. Just take this as a lesson. It, it is kind of fun just knowing that you're flying something that you made though, you know? Like I didn't buy this, I designed this. I didn't just download it online either. Look at that sexy bastard. Oh, I, you know, I just realized I didn't set the, uh, the current sensor thing, so I have no idea how much battery I got left. I don't even know if the voltage is right, so I gotta be kind of careful here. And do a yaw spin. That's cool. All right, I'm gonna bring it in because I have no idea how much battery this has left. Well, this is going better than expected. If I'm being honest, I kind of expected it to just do a fly away again and then break again. So I'm pleasantly surprised. Doesn't fly the best, of course, because the tune is super, super sloppy. There's a lot of prop wash. It just feels loose on the controls because the P gain's so low. Um, I could turn it up, but I, 
really don't want to because if it causes a flyaway, it's a lot of work to print one of these and put it all together again. So I think I'm just gonna fly this other pack and call it a day. But I mean, this is pretty cool. I designed this, I printed this myself. It's just cool to see something that you made fly. So if you haven't done this before, I kind of, I recommend doing this at least once just to get a feel for some of the constraints of what you should do, what you shouldn't do, things like these stiffeners about how you have to be aware of vibrations and just little things like that that you you might hear it from somebody online but you're not really going to know why it matters until you've actually been the one building it. So I recommend just checking it out. It's a lot of fun. You learn a ton. I think it's well worth it. This is another good area to practice throttle control. I would, I'd probably call this like the intermediate testing area. I mean, it's not like super low, um, but it's not super high either. You know, you got maybe 10-ish feet to practice this on. God, it's so loose. Oh, gross. I gotta be careful. I'm gonna clip a branch and lose my drone. Because like I said, they are very brittle. Oh, I know why it feels punchier. My I have 2600 kV motors on here. I still have my 4S, but I typically use, I think 2200. So no wonder it feels punchier. Oh no! Am I out of battery? Or am I just stuck? I feel like I'm just stuck. <laughs> Better go grab that. I don't know, it feels low. Well, I definitely got lucky. That's kind of why I chose this area, because there's like tall grass and stuff. So it kind of dampens out the crashes a little bit. But nothing broke. Surprising, I guess. I think coming here was a good choice. Because if that was on concrete or something even though it landed flat i guarantee you it would have snapped so i got i got lucky there i saved myself a bunch of hours <laughs> all right well i'm gonna wrap this one up today that was really fun i love designing stuff and just tweaking it to get it to work it's so much fun it's such a challenge sometimes and i did not foresee this one coming i thought i could just print it and go with pretty much the same design i'd used before but I think because I was using PLA before and it's stiffer, I think that's why I didn't have some of these issues. But I was eventually able to get it to work, as you saw. I increased the filtering a little bit. I just did a few little workarounds to try and fix the issue that I was having, and I was able to get it working. And that last crash there, the battery was out. Uh, I really need to get the voltmeter thing sorted out on this before I put it in another quad, because um, I had no idea it was low none at all so i i would have just kept flying but i just didn't have the power to punch out of that but until next time if you enjoyed this video please drop a like down below feel free to give me a comment and please subscribe if you haven't see you in the next one